This is how I programmed in the 1980s. This is my old Compact 3 computer, which is what I used back then. And this is the language I programmed with. Well, the great news is I can still use that same language on modern computer hardware, on a modern operating system today. And I recommend that you give it a go too, because it's a great language and an influential one. In fact, it's influenced programming languages as diverse as Python, Ada and Go, and without it, there probably wouldn't ever have been Java or C Sharp. And yet, many modern programmers have never used this language. This is Turbo Pascal 3, and it dates from 1986. And from 1987 behind me, this is Turbo Pascal 4, and this has its own editing environment with drop-down menus, which were very slick for the time. It ran under MS-DOS, the MS-DOS operating system. And this is the same Turbo Pascal program running on a modern Windows IDE. Pascal was a great language back in the 1980s, and it's a great language now. In this series, I'll explain how you can write both procedural and object-oriented Pascal programs on Windows, on a Mac, or on Linux, and how that coding experience will help you to write clear, well-structured code in Pascal or in other languages with or without objects. I'm Hugh, and this is the first in a new series about procedural programming with Pascal. The ideas of Pascal and of the languages that grew out of it, such as Modular 2 and Oberon, continue to be enormously influential. James Gosling, who developed Java, was a Pascal programmer who took the idea of the virtual machine that was used by UCSD Pascal as the inspiration for Java's virtual machine. Anders Heilsberg, who developed C Sharp for Microsoft, had previously been the architect of the Delphi object Pascal system, as well as other Pascal compilers, stretching way back to Borland's non-object-oriented Turbo Pascal for MS-DOS in the early 80s. I remember attending a Borland Developers Conference in San Francisco in, well, I suppose it was the late 80s or maybe the early 90s, at a time when the first object-oriented version of Turbo Pascal was just being launched. At that time, Heilsberg made no secret of the fact that he was a reluctant convert to the whole idea of object orientation. Indeed, he said that he had at first argued with Philippe Kahn, the boss of Borland at the time, that the non-object-oriented or procedural version of Turbo Pascal was neat and elegant and didn't need objects. Well, clearly Kahn eventually convinced him, and so Object Pascal was born. The Object Pascal language is still at the heart of the Delphi programming environment, and it's also implemented by the open-source Free Pascal compiler. But Object Pascal is not a replacement for Procedural Pascal, it's an extension of it. Both Delphi and Free Pascal continue to support Procedural Pascal. If you want to dive straight into Object Pascal development, I already have a couple of tutorial series on my YouTube channel. There's one on programming quite a complicated drag and drop uh, outlining tool using Delphi. And there's another on cross-platform programming with Lazarus and Free Pascal. The links to those are down below. But in this new series, I want to concentrate on the fundamental ideas of Pascal to try to understand why it's been so influential. Let me quote from Niklaus Wirth, the creator of Pascal, in his user manual and report on Pascal. This is the second edition from 1978. His first aim, he says, is to make available a language suitable to teach programming as a systematic discipline based on certain fundamental concepts clearly and naturally reflected by the language. That's important to understand. Initially, Pascal was created to teach good programming practice. That helps to explain why the reserved words are very explicit, begin and end to delimit blocks, for example, instead of the curly brackets in C-like languages. And it also explains why certain elements of programming style are enforced rather than left to the individual programmer. For example, in traditional Pascal, all variables must be pre-declared before any executable code in which they are used. And like in many other languages, variable declarations can't just be scattered amongst the code. This is, in fact, something that you can do in recent versions of Delphi, but I won't be doing it because I want to use a syntax that is close 
to Turbo Pascal and Standard Pascal, and besides which inline variables like that seem to me to contradict the design principles of Pascal. Let me again find what Niklaus Wirth has to say. Uh, each variable, every variable occurring in a statement must be declared in a variable declaration. This declaration must textually precede the use of the variable. So in Pascal, variables are placed in their own specially des designated declaration block. That's the way Pascal has always done it. Free Pascal, unlike Delphi, continues to enforce that. As I said earlier, one of Pascal's main design goals was to teach good programming practice. Now, since Pascal was developed, many of its ideas have been incorporated into other languages. Even so, I think Pascal's obsession with programming st structure and clarity still provide lessons worth learning today. Now, many years ago, I programmed in various versions of Turbo Pascal. I began with version 3, as I showed you on the computer behind me earlier. But here you can see Turbo Pascal 4, uh, and this dates from 1987. You can still download that software if you really want to, and you can run it either with MS-DOS or with a DOS emulator such as DOSBox. But for most people, it would be easier to use a modern IDE. And in this series, I'll be using the Lazarus IDE, but my code should work just as well with Delphi. Go to the Lazarus site and download and install the appropriate version for your operating system. Follow the installation guidelines on the website, then come back to this tutorial, and I'll explain how to write your very first program. Load up Lazarus and select Project, New Project, and simple program. Now I've selected simple program rather than console application because Lazarus automatically writes quite a large amount of code for a console application. Simple program is, well, it's much simpler, which is what I want. So click OK. And it writes the project name in here with the program keyword and then begin and end followed by a full stop. The full stop just says that's the end of the program. Begin and end, that's where I'm going to write my code between those two keywords. Now, before I do that, let's put in a variable section that begins with var, another keyword, and I'll put in the name of a string variable, followed by a colon, that's the divider between the name of the variable and its type, the type will be string, and the end of the statement is a semicolon. Now, write some code between the begin and end. I just want to write a prompt here, write uh, a pair of parentheses ending with a semicolon. I'm going to put a string in here. In Pascal, strings are delimited by single quotation marks. And between that, I'm going to put this prompt. Enter your name. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, to save some time, write a bit more code. Okay, so I've written a few more lines of code. I'm just going to enlarge the font. I can do that by pressing control and scrolling my mouse button. And this is just for clarity so you can see what I've done. So as I was saying, I've created this my name variable, which is a string type. I've write, written this prompt, which is a string, enter your name. Now on the next line, I read the name that the user enters. So it waits till some, the user's entered something. Then it reads the text that was entered and assigns that value to the string my name. Finally, it calls right line, right line. It's just like right, except it puts a, a, a carriage return at the end of the line. So it writes hello, comma, uh, and then the second element here after the comma is the value of the variable, which will be the string that the user entered. And oops, we made a mistake here. Read lin. That's the name of the final function that will wait until the ent the user enters a new line. So let me save that file, save, give it a name, uh, whatever you like. I'm just going to call it project one. And to run it, I run this, click this arrow up here, accept those defaults, up pops this system prompt. I enter my name. It says as uh, I told it to in the code, hello, followed by the value of the my name variable. Then it finally waits because of this readlin at the end for me to press enter. And that's it.
One other thing to bear in mind is that Pascal is not case sensitive, so I can change the cases of these identifiers and they will still work, which is quite unusual as most other languages are case sensitive. So that's how to get started with writing a very simple Pascal application. In the next lesson in this series, I'll explain the fundamental ideas of Pascal and we look at the essential features and syntax of the language. If you can't wait that long, I already have a 10 minute introduction to basic Pascal syntax in another video. So if you're happy to dive straight in, that will give you a first step. You'll find the link to that lesson under this video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new lessons.